Now we want to have a look at what we call the characteristics of waves. In other words, some of the features that all waves have. One of those, first of all, is frequency. And you can see that word here. So the frequency of a wave is the number of waves that are generated or pass a specific point in one second. So here, for example, we've got a frequency of one wave per second. So if I increase the frequency, and you can see there, the number of waves per second uh, is increased. So there, if you like, we've got two waves, around about two waves per second now. Now, the units for that <clears throat> are not waves per second, but hertz. And you can see the abbreviation there, HZ. Another feature of waves is their amplitude. And here you can see the amplitude is set at 0.75 centimetres. I'll just slow the frequency down a little. And we'll change the amplitude. So I'll increase that amplitude there perhaps to, to one one centimetre. Now, when we're talking about the amplitude, and I'll just stop this to illustrate with the amplitude, we're talking about the distance that these particles have moved from their equilibrium position or their rest position. So we're talking about the maximum displacement from their rest position. So here, for example, that distance there is the amplitude. The same thing goes over here. The distance from here to here, the maximum displacement from the rest position is their amplitude. One feature of waves that uh, I haven't spoken about is what we call the crest of a transverse wave. This part here, this top part is the crest. Down here, we have what is called a trough. So crest, that's the top part, and a trough, which is a kind of basin shape like that. We see those terms applied in other areas apart from waves, but they do apply for transverse waves. Now, uh, another feature of uh, waves is what we call a wavelength. And I'll just change the frequency here because there's a connection between the wavelength and the frequency. The, <clears throat> when we're talking about the wavelength, we're talking about the distance between one point on a wave here to the corresponding or the matching point of the wave over here. So from here to here, that is one wavelength. Or if you like, from here, this point here, to the corresponding point on the next wave or the adjacent wave here, that would be one wavelength. Or from here to here, that is one wavelength. Now, the last feature of, of waves that uh, I'd like to talk about is what we call the period. Now, the period of a wave is the time taken for one vibration or one oscillation that we have. So if I just remove the, if I minimise the frequency a little and start this, we're talking about the time that it takes for the wave to go from here to here, down and back to there one complete vibration. That is what we call the period, the period of the wave. And of course, there is a connection between the period of a wave and its frequency. If I increase the frequency, so we have more waves per second, then the time for that movement is smaller. In other words, there is an inverse relationship between 
period and frequency. And that inverse relationship is that the period is equal to one over the frequency. Now we can also get these same features of waves uh, to uh, compression waves. Here we're looking of course at a transverse wave. Let's have a quick look at a compression wave. So here you can see a compression wave or a longitudinal wave. And again, the same features apply. We've got a wavelength and you can see that marked here. So this is from the center of this compression to the matching or the corresponding position on the next wave. So that is one wavelength. And of course, the same applies here. A one wavelength could be the a distance from the centre of this rear faction to the corresponding rear faction here. So that's wavelength. Now we can't see the frequency, but if this was moving faster over here, the hand was moving faster, then that would, of course, produce a higher frequency and a lower period. When it comes to the amplitude of compression waves, that can be a little bit difficult to recognise, but if we go back to this uh, picture here of a longitudinal wave, we're still looking at the maximum displacement from rest position. So if we have a look here, this was our maximum displacement from the rest position. The same thing applied here. So the amplitude of this particular wave happens to be 18 millimetres. And if we have a look at uh, this representation here, you can see how we can represent the amplitude of the compression wave uh, by looking at the maximum displacement as shown here. So these are the features, uh, these are the characteristics of all waves. All waves have frequency, the number of times per second measured in hertz. They have a wavelength, they have a period, and they have an amplitude.